Welcome back to Tactical Accountants. Today I'm going to be comparing this Holosun HS510C to this EOTech XPS3. Despite the price difference and different technologies used, these optics have a lot in common, but they also have some key differences that can make one a better choice for your particular setup and needs. Going to start, as I often do, with weight. So the Holosun 510C with included quick detach absolute uh, co-witness height mount comes in at 7.6 ounces. The EOTech XPS3 also with absolute co-witness height mount, just not quick detach, comes in at 8.8 .8 ounces. So a little more than an ounce difference. People often compare the Holosun not to the XPS3, but to this EXPS3, which comes in at 11 ounces. Now the reason for this is that the EXPS has a quick detach mount, and it's also a higher optic. It's a lower one-third height co-witness as opposed to absolute co-witness. The Holosun definitely has the weight advantage. It also has co-witness advantage in that you can run it as is here, absolute uh, co-witness height. You can also buy an inexpensive riser around $10. I haven't been able to track one down to raise it to a lower one-third co-witness if that is what you prefer. Because with these EOTechs, you have to choose going in whether you want absolute co-witness or lower one-third. There is no riser on the market that I can see to turn one into the other. With the Holosun, you definitely get more of a feature set than with the EOTech. We're looking right here almost at max brightness of the reticle in standard mode. So you see a two MOA dot with a 65 MOA circle around it. If I hold the back button for two seconds, the circle disappears. We have just the dot, hold it again. Now we have just the circle. Now, if we press the increase button for two seconds, what's going to happen is the reticle blinks once and now it is in automatic brightness mode where it uses this solar panel to gauge the ambient light and to adjust accordingly. This is in contrast to the EOTech where in terms of reticle, what you see is what you get. There is a one MOA dot with a 68 MOA circle around it. You can't turn off either the dot or the circle. There is no automatic brightness setting. It's all manual. And it has to be said, I'm not sure how well it turns up on camera at 1x, but the EOTech, because it is a holographic site instead of a red dot site, the reticle is far less crisp and clean looking than on the Hollow Sun. It looks pixelated, it looks like old technology whereas the Holosun reticle is extremely crisp. I set up a little Lego figure uh, at five yards. I did some mental gymnastics and determined that a figure one and a half inches tall at five yards would be roughly similar to a six foot tall figure at 200 yards. Uh, if anybody wants to double check my math and call me out in the comments, please feel free to do so. In any case, you can see the images here, a three X magnifier to me, there really isn't much between them. You can tell that the EOTech is a tiny bit finer just based on the area of the helmet. It doesn't cover. With that said, to me, the hollow sun dot looks more perfect and circular, whereas the EOTech looks slightly smudged. So I'm not sure you should read into that one versus two MOA dot thing too much. The hollow sun runs off a single 2032 battery goes in that tray in the side there. I should say that this is kind of a pain to remove, at least on my example. I would not want to swap this battery in the field because I flicked this thing across the room by the time I got it to budge out of the little slot there. The quoted battery life from Holosun with that circle dot reticle is 20,000 hours at brightness setting six out of 10 visible settings. So 20,000 hours with the circle dot. And if you want to run just the dot, 50,000 hours. With the EOTech, you are looking at a 1,000 hour 
battery life on brightness setting 12, I believe, out of 20 visible brightness settings. Furthermore, the EOTAC uses a CR123A battery. Uh, 123As are more expensive, of course, than 2032s. They're heavier. And the most important part of all, uh, the battery life is 1 20th or 1 50th of the hollow suns, depending on the reticle you run. As if that weren't enough of an advantage for the hollow sun, this solar panel, not only does it gauge the ambient light for auto brightness mode, but you can see the battery is still removed from the site right now. And if we focus through the site, we still have a reticle. Now let's compare that to the EOTech reticle with the battery removed. Stop! Stop! He's already dead. Both sites have auto shutoff features to conserve battery life, but they work differently. The hollow sun senses motion. If it senses that the site hasn't moved for 10 minutes, it will turn off the reticle. And then when you move the site again, the reticle will power right back on at the same brightness setting as when you last used it. And the EOTAC does not sense motion, rather it shuts off the reticle based on how much time has elapsed since you last interacted with any of the buttons. If you power this site on with the brightness down button, then it will shut itself off four hours after the last button press. If you power it on with the brightness up button, it will shut itself off eight hours after the last button press. Uh, unfortunately, it will not power itself back on. And if you do go to power it back on after it has shut itself off, it's not going to return to the last brightness setting used. It's going to return to the default, which I believe is 12 out of 20. In terms of brightness, both sites get extremely bright, more than bright enough. Uh, they're being displayed right now at maximum brightness. I also took them outside the other day. Uh, close to single digits and the sun is shining. So in terms of a bright backdrop, I can't think of one much better. So this is the Hollow Sun 510C on max brightness. Radical is easily visible. Bit of a blue tint. EOTech EXPS3. Same conditions. This is the maximum brightness. It kind of looks like it's flickering uh, through the iPhone there. I can assure you in real life it's not flickering, but it looks a little brighter than the Hollow Sun on max brightness to me. The window on the Hollow Sun is physically about 1 20th of an inch, both taller and wider than the EOTech. Uh, if you look on the screen, I have the exact dimensions written out. This is pretty much a moot point. If you're shooting with either of these, you should really be shooting both eyes open and then the field of view is identical with both because your brain is combining the images. If you're looking just through the glass, the hollow sun does have a slightly bigger field of view. Uh, with that said, the hollow sun also has more of a bluish tint, whereas the EOTech doesn't. In the vast majority of lighting conditions, uh, outdoors and indoors as well, when there's enough light, you're really not going to notice the tint. It's really just going back and forth. The blue tint is a big deal, however, when this gets involved. This is a PBS 14 Gen 3 night vision monocular. The hype about the EOTech and the increased uh, price is for a good reason when it comes to night vision use. If you don't believe me, just take a look at this clip. All right, down here in the basement, uh, my basement, not my mom's basement for the record, with the PVS-14, close to pitch black. So this is without any optic for reference. This is how things look. If you see that box fan over there, uh, I went ahead and set up a little uh, Christmas tree angel on top of it. That's the black thing. That's our target. So this is the Hollow Sun 510C on the lowest brightness setting for the reticle. So this is night vision one. You can kind of see it there. 
it's usable. It's definitely usable. There is some bloom around the reticle. So the reticle gets dark enough to use with night vision, but it does glow in a very dark environment like this one. And then if we wanted to try to pick up that target there on the box fan, you can see the tint through the glass. The image through the glass is darker than through just the PVS 14. EOTech XPS 3, lowest illumination setting uh, on the reticle, night vision one. You can see the reticle does get quite a bit darker than the hollow sun. There's no uh, bloom at all, no glow. And looking at everything, including at that box fan and the angel, it's almost like the sight's not there. We can pick that up if we needed to engage it in a uh, passive night vision capacity without using IR. It's really amazing. As the name would suggest, holographic, it's like the reticle is floating in space. It's like the glass isn't even there. Because they work in completely different ways. If you take a look at this diagram that I don't fully understand, you can see that the red dot works by projecting against the front lens, which has to be coated red. The EOTech uses a series of mirrors and magic, as far as I'm concerned, to project the reticle directly, um, I don't know, into space between two pieces of glass. I don't understand it. Yeah, Mr. White. Yes, science. The important thing for our purposes is that the EOTech is superior simply when it comes to passive night vision aiming. They are both rated for night vision. The Holosun has two night vision settings. Uh, brightness wise, the EOTech has 10. With the Holosun, to get down to the night vision brightness settings, you just keep pressing that down arrow. With the EOTech, you have this button, NV, in between the brightness buttons. Unfortunately, getting to pretend that you're on the Bin Laden raid while you're looking through your optic uh, does come at a price, roughly twice the price. The Holosun HS510C, MSRPs for $309.99 with a street price uh, as of the time of this recording of around $250. I'm seeing it online. The EOTech XPS3 MSRPs for $675 with a street price. If you can find it, I was able to snag this for $550, but that seems like a pretty good price. I would say if you can get it for close to $600, you're, you're doing pretty well. So the Holosun is quite a bit cheaper, and that is quite a big consideration for all of us. I noticed for me, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm cheap. Uh, I would say... You're extremely careful with money. <laughs> that is a Streamlight TLR VIR2. $300 combination white light and infrared illuminator and laser designator. For the price of just this EOTech, you can have both the hollow sun and if you want to run active IR illumination, active night vision aiming, you can have that on your rifle too. So something to consider. You can definitely, you can definitely play around with your money if you don't want to splurge on that EOTech. I, however, have decided that I am going to splurge on the EOTech and this XPS3 is what is going to be staying on my uh, primary night vision rifle. To be completely honest, if you are not planning on ever going into night vision, I would go with the Holosun. I think the vast majority of people are going to be happier with this site, even regardless of price, than with the EOTech. But I really think you can't go wrong with either. If you have any questions about either of these sites, let us know in the comments. Thank you for tuning in. Let me know if I missed anything. Hopefully we'll have more content with uh, the night vision going forward since it is a brave new world for me and I hope to share it with you guys. So thanks for tuning in. Take care. We'll see you next time.